In this video, we're going to look at a one-tailed uh, hypothesis test about the mean of a population. Uh, remember that there were three different uh, uh, kinds of hypothesis tests about the mean of a population. One is a two-tailed test. One is a lower-tailed test where the alternative hypothesis is saying that the mean is less than, than some particular value. And we're going to look at the upper-tailed test this time. In this case, somebody is claiming that the mean of the population is some particular number, mu zero. And, and the alternative is that, no, that's not true. The alternative is that the mu is actually greater than that particular number. So here's how we're going to use these three distributions to do that. Here's our population. Okay, and what we're saying, is, what somebody is saying, is that there's a null hypothesis that is claiming that mu is equal to some number, and for our discussion we'll call that number mu naught. So they're claiming that mu is some particular value. So the mean of this population, by their claim, is going to be some mu zero. The alternative that somebody is claiming, there's an alternative to that, that choice, the alternative hypothesis is no, mu is actually greater than that mu zero. Okay, so we test this hypothesis by taking one sample. Okay, now it, often it's difficult to get a sample taken. And so we've, we've in, invested the time and energy to take a sample that's got a size n, and we get some, uh, we look at the, the point estimate that we get from that sample, we look at the sample mean of that sample, okay? And it becomes some particular value up here. Now the question is, under the hypothesis that this really is the mean, how likely is it that this sample mean would be this far away from mu zero. Okay, that's what the question is. We'll calculate that in the following way. We'll take that x value and convert it to a t value, which just counts how many standard errors or how many standard deviations we are away from, from this claimed mean. So we're going to take x bar minus the hypothesized mean mu zero and divide all of that by the standard deviation of this distribution of sample means. That's sometimes called the standard error. So s divided by the square root of n. Okay. So that calculation is counting how many standard deviations, how many standard errors we are away from this hypothesized mu zero. That's going to give us some particular t value down here. Okay. So this we converted this x bar to a t value. And the question is, how likely is that to happen? So what's the p-value, we could calculate a p-value here, which would be that area above this t, okay? Notice that you're getting that information from the, from the alternative hypothesis. That's the direction that you go, is the direction that the alternative hypothesis suggests. Okay, now if that p-value is low, that is, it's a small number, that would mean that t is way up here to the right. If the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. Okay, so we would reject the null hypothesis if that p-value is very small. In a more classical setting, that same reasoning is done this way. Somebody says, I want a particular confidence level. So they say, find a t here so that this area 
is less than, say, maybe the significance level is 0 0.01. So they identify some confidence level, uh, so some significance level, uh, maybe 0 0.01. And if this T ends up being up in that danger area, if it ends up being far enough away that it's, mm, that it's uh, in, in that significant region, then we would reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if the T ends up back here, then we would uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that's that one-tailed test.